Cleveland Zipcore XL irons. These are the new irons from Cleveland, featuring technology that we've seen from the wedges coming over, giving you more precision irons as well as distance-based clubs. These clubs are kind of built for someone who just wants to plonk it on the ground, swing it and whack it, like ease of hit. Let's give them a full review. So we're looking at a cavity-backed, medium top-line little bit of offset, quite long in its blade length, like it's gonna inspire confidence, giving that kind of ease of gameability feel down by the ball. And there is, there's a lot of club down there, which for the golfer who wants help, they're gonna like that. You know, for me, it's a bit long for my eye, but I wouldn't be playing this iron. I would like something to look a certain way, but I would be playing this iron for the kind of stronger lofts and the feeling of support it gives. And it does, it does give nice feelings of support when you look from this end. You know, you see right down into the cavity. It does make you think, oh yeah, that's gonna help me while giving what I would call like a medium in prettiness looks, as in it's not the prettiest and it shouldn't be really, you know, it's not trying to be a blade, which is where I would kind of put most pretty. What does it feel like? Oh yeah, the launch is impressive. Like that's gone out there and you gotta remember the lofts of these are gonna be up there. Um, it feels solid. It's not kind of soft feeling. It feels like there's a bit of a pop off the face. Kind of feels like a plonk it down, swing it and whack it club. Do you know what I mean? Like just plonk it down, swing it, plenty of head, whack it. And I think if you strip away all the golf snobbery, more golfers should use a plonk it down, swing it and whack it kind of golf club. Oh yeah, I mean it feels, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yes, that comes off. Like I ripped that one and it's super, super fiery. And it feels super easy to pop up. Like they were just going up. That's the eight iron, let's try to wedge. Quite rounded on the toe. Plenty of face down by the ball. Yeah, it do, they do just feel very solid. And loads of fun. Oh, you pop it down, you swing it. And you just whack it. And I test a lot of irons and when you start getting away from the golf hype, you do start thinking like, why are more people not thinking this way? I love what they're doing with the sole. It's in my irons, this sole. I like the subtleness of the largeness of it. Like it hasn't got big chunks hanging off the end. It, like it's all shaped in a nice friendly way while shaped in a friendly way. Pop it down, swing it, whack it, clubs. Oh, the six iron's gonna be a bomber. I think we better come back a bit for the six iron. <laughs> it's gonna be a bomber. Yeah, it's a bomber, and that is so easy to launch. <laughs> Woo, up you go. It's kind of everything you would want from this style of iron. Friendly, with a bit of class. Looks really good on the shop floor backside of it. Feels solid. Doesn't feel pretentious, just feels like a, I'm gonna say it again. It's a put it down, swing it, whack it club. This iron is surprisingly packed with tech and something quite different. So in the four to seven iron, we get the main frame. This is a variable network of grooves and channels and cavities milled into the backside of the club face to boost the COR along with the weight pads that boost the MOI. So they're literally trying to increase that ball speed and that ball speed across the face with main frame. We see Cleveland's Golf V-shaped sole on the bottom. This is fantastic, something I've used in many of their clubs for years. It gives that feeling of that turf interaction, that club going in and out of that turf. It certainly promotes a feeling and idea of how that club can and could act with the ground. And we're now seeing the zip core and Hydra zip technology, first used in the short clubs, first used in their wedges. Now coming over to the irons. So eight iron to sand wedge feature these two technologies, and they're gonna give you more consistency of launch. They're gonna allow you to Island distances more accurately in those scoring clubs. So you get the bomber side of this, but then when you get down into those scorer clubs, they're using their wedge technology to really try and dial in those distances to help you hit more greens. 
So the numbers are as expected. I'm in an eight iron. Bearing in mind the lofts of these clubs being so strong, I'm averaging this eight iron at 174 yards. Like they're bombers, they're strong, but it still launches. It still goes up in the air. Launching near a 90 degrees, spinning around 5,500 revs. So it's high launch, low spin, strong lofted. As you expect, where game improvement clubs are at the minute, they're bombers, and these are no different. I mean, I feel like I could get this eight iron getting up to 185 if I pushed it on an eight iron. That's mad. So when it comes to the price, I know this is a bit of a triggering topic for lots of people because definitely the chat about how expensive golf clubs have got is a good one to have. And maybe in the comments down below, let me know your thoughts on the price of modern golf equipment. But when it comes to the technology in these clubs and the brand, you're getting seven piece sets for appropriate prices coming up here, which in the modern world of clubs is relatively reasonable subject to what we're getting out of these. And like I say, the brand and the custom fit availability as well at certain venues for this product. So yes, price triggers, I get it. Like I wish it was all cheaper, but as it stands, these are not a bad price for a pretty well-known tech-driven golf cup manufacturer. So fun game to finish. We're going to play how far can I smash the six iron? Bear in mind that's built to be sent. Where how precision based, how accurate can I be with the pitching wedge? We're at Valderrama, we're going over water. So if I crash, we're going to see the crashes. Let's go top end and bottom end. Obviously you could have a five iron, four or whatever. I'm going at six because that is my longest iron, believe it or not. So in the comments, how far out can we go with the six iron? We're starting at 190. So 190 is kind of like a nice six iron struck, not that great. Let's see if it makes it. Not the world's best strike, but we are carrying the water. Oh, not a bad shot. We're now at 200 yards, 200.3 yards. Getting a little bit thin, you'll see it just fading. But enough ball to feel like, oh yeah, I'm getting over there fine. And that's an average hit. I am not up and down in that. 219 yards, 0.6. With the six, 219 yards. I am not making this. I'm gonna have to smash this. That is obviously to the pin, the pin's at the back, so the carry isn't that. But that's still gonna have to be hit. And I have hit that, turned it as well. It's my longest flight. Go! Oh! 231.5 <laughs> yards. I think we all know the answer here, but 219. I mean, that, that, I, just the six iron strong. It's a 210 carry. Uh, right, this needs to be epic. Oh, I got the speed. That is an awful strike. Oh, it's, it's a land short in the water. It's so <laughs> embarrassing. But I think you can see there, you know, it's strong. They're strong lofted and it feels friendly enough until I start going silly to absolutely belt it. Now 126 yards with the pitching wedge. So I'm now really gonna dot around hitting feely shots. Not full outs, like can I judge distance? Can I be precise? Can I try and get the ball close to the hole in the scoring clubs? So I've hit like a little knock down there because this is 43 degree loft pitching wedge. And 42 yards now. So more of a full hit. Just a little bit of a push. Like that little drop off there, don't I? But it's there, 108.3. Totally wouldn't use this club for this shot, but I would in certain situations, not this one. That's a real guess to make there. Is that gonna go 100 yards? Yeah, I mean, look, the distances are good, aren't they? The, the precision of distances on a power built club, you can see that I'm able to show my skill. The club can't override it. I, I use the term skill there loosely. I'm just dotting around those distances with the scoring clubs, even though they're power bats, I'm able to still feel that precision in there. And you could see what I could do with the top end of the club. Like, yeah, I, I just think they're well-priced from a great brand set of clubs. Yes, I'm wearing the hat. Yes, I have a deal with Cleveland Strixons XCO, but they have no say in any of my content. So I don't care if you think this is biased or not. You saw what happened there. Whatever you want to buy. Honestly, I don't mind care what you buy as long as you get tested and it's right for you. That's all that I care about. But they have to be fairly tested and they are. 
I could game them, and you probably will see me game them throughout the year. If you want to find out how to hit more precision shots like that with your irons, check this video out, because it's got the information you need to make you have more skill with whatever club you go for.